Good afternoon. Welcome back once again to The Edward. I'm your host, Eddie, and in this afternoon's video, I will be doing uh, one of my prediction videos. And in today's video, I will be doing The Edward's Predictions for the Justice League Part 1. Now, before I begin and I start blabbering on and on, of course, please be warned, uh, do not keep watching or listening to this video as I will be going into massive spoilers, major spoilers for Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, which came out uh, a week ago. Uh, so if you guys have not seen the movie yet, A, why the hell not? It's awesome. Screw the critics. And that's coming from a critic. B, uh, once you have seen it and whether or not how you felt about it, uh, come on back and then rewatch and listen to this video as I give my thoughts on what we may or may not see in the Justice League Part 1. So you have been warned. Please be advised one more time. Major spoilers to follow for Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice if you have not seen it yet. Uh, that being said, so... What I really liked about the ending for Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, I know that this movie wasn't a hit for a lot of people, but for a lot of us, we ate it up like it was candy. And I can speak for many fans, not all of the fans, but I can speak for a lot of fans when I say we loved it. It had, to, it, for me personally, it delivered everything I was hoping to see. But what I liked about the ending, as hard as it was to watch poor Superman bite it when he's impaled on the bone, on the spiky, on the spiky sharp bone of Doomsday. But of course, in turn, Superman is impaling him with the kryptonite spear, thanks to Batman. And then they both die. Uh, as hard as that was to watch, I knew, of course, okay, obviously he's not really dead dead because Henry Cavill tweeted a photo weeks ago before the movie came out, tweeted a shirtless photo of himself working out, getting pumped and ready to begin filming for the Justice League Part 1, which begins filming April 11th, and the movie is set to be released in theaters November 17th of 2017. So we still have a really long ways to go before we see anything. Damn it! But I'm sure it's going to be fun looking forward to it. So anyway, I knew that Superman wasn't really dead dead, and obviously the final scene of the movie is where we see the bits of dirt on Clark Kent's coffin slowly start to elevate and rise, implying that he's not dead. In fact, he's slowly, he's probably slowly self-healing. And as we saw when he got hit by the nuclear missile in space, he was out of it for a bit, but his body and cells slowly regenerated thanks to the sun, the Earth's sun, which gives him uh, unlimited powers and uh, healing abilities. And perhaps uh, somebody will put two and two together and decide... Hmm, maybe we should put the Clark Kent's coffin under the sunlight in order to resurrect him or something like that. I don't know. But what I liked about the ending was that it set the tone for how the Justice League is going to be brought together. Bruce Wayne realizes that they all need to be fighting alongside each other as one unit because with Superman gone and being haunted by his nightmare he had about Superman but also the potential future of the Earth with this invasive alien force and he doesn't know it but of course we know it we recognize it those aliens the winged aliens were parademons which are of course the army of dark side the ultimate bad guy in the dc universe and uh, obviously it's implied dark sides and forces have invaded and taken over the earth and superman for some reason has either joined dark side as an ally or he killed dark side and took over his army and now rules the earth with an iron fist. Anyway, that's the scenario. That was that might have been the scenario in Batman's Nightmare. But because he feels like that that future is definitely possible now with especially with Superman gone, the stakes are so incredibly high for the necessity of forming a superhero team because Batman can't defend the earth alone. He's one guy. He's a rich guy with a bunch of toys and high tech uh, wearing a suit looking looking like a bat, but he's no Superman. And Wonder Woman's around, but she can only do so much. That's why he realizes the importance and necessity of finding the other metahumans that he and Wonder Woman looked at in Lex Luthor's computer files. Aquaman, Cyborg, and The Flash. And they're all out there, and they're just waiting to be found. And Zack Snyder said himself that Justice League, part of the movie, will focus on at least Batman's efforts. I don't know if Wonder Woman will be helping him as well. She probably will, but definitely Batman's efforts in seeking out and finding these other metahumans and convincing them to form the Justice League. 
So what I liked, to, so like I said, what I liked about the ending is that they limit, they killed Superman, and of course he's not really dead. He'll come back in Justice League Part One, but they raised the stakes so high for Justice League without Superman. A need for a team of superheroes is so important, especially now because Batman doesn't really know what's coming. He's plagued by that nightmare, so something may or may not be coming, and just in case it is, they need a team of superheroes. So, with recent casting and uh, news, uh, in or like uh, recently, they announced J.K. Simmons, veteran actor J.K. Sim Simmons, was cast in the movie as Commissioner Jim Gordon. So we know that a part of the movie will be taking place in Gotham City, Batman's home turf. And of course, uh, Amber Heard confirmed that those rumors were true, and uh, she is indeed joining the cast as Mira. Uh, the wife of Aquaman, Queen of Atlantis. So a part of the movie will be in Atlantis, if not a lot of it. And uh, what's so exciting about it, too, is that there's a rumor that Batman may have some sort of bat submarine, which he may or may not use in order to get to Atlantis to meet and talk with Aquaman. Now, here's what I see. This is what's interesting about Aquaman. This was a rumor way this was a theory going way back to when Man of Steel first came out before a Batman v Superman movie was announced. They said Aquaman may be upset with Superman or the surface dwellers in general because he blames them for the disruption of the balance of the ocean that was done to the Indian Ocean when the world engine was trying to turn the earth into Krypton, the new Krypton. And Superman battled with it, battled with it, destroyed it, but he left all this crap in the ocean. So Aquaman is probably not happy about that aspect of it. And overall, Aquaman has never really been that trusting of the surface dwellers to begin with. So it's going to be interesting to see how Batman and Wonder Woman, or possibly just Batman, try to convince the King of Atlantis to join him on the surface to protect the Earth. And how he's going to try to convince him of the necessity of a super superhero team. I don't think they'll have much trouble convincing Flash. Flash tends to be a pretty laid-back, open-minded uh, guy. So when he's like approached by Batman and Wonder Woman, of all people, he'll probably be like, okay, sure, yeah, I'm down. Unless he's got his own reasons as to why he wouldn't. And if he does, that'll be interesting to see why. But I see the Flash, out of all our characters, being the one who's uh, most on board, saying, okay, I'm in, let's do this, let's form the Justice League. Cyborg, it'll be interesting to see Cyborg's story, because this is my own theory about Cyborg, and a lot of other people may feel the same way, but the way, when we saw Cyborg's profile and his father was putting him back together at Star Labs and then using the alien technology, the mother box, I believe it's called, that would eventually give him his full cyborg body. I wonder if Victor Stone was one of the, was one of the victims of the Battle of Metropolis during the end of Man of Steel when Superman and Zod were fighting and destroying half of Metropolis. What if Victor Stone was just a regular guy in human, he was a human being, but he was injured when a building fell on top of him or he was crippled in some way where he lost most of his body except his head, his arm, and part of his torso. So what if Cyborg isn't exactly open to the idea of working with Superman or working with a group of people who want to keep the idea of Superman alive, he may not be totally open or accepting of that idea because he may blame Superman for his current condition. Or he might be a sensible, decent man who realizes it's the right thing to do despite what's happened to him and embraces his new strength, his new powers, his new identity, so to speak, as Cyborg, and he remains Victor Stone for the most part, but he becomes a brand new man or being altogether. So it'll be interesting to see how uh, Cyborg embraces the idea of the Justice League once Batman and Wonder Woman go to recruit him, or at least just Batman. So that's what I'm thinking we're going to see in this movie. Uh, it'll be also interesting to see if Mira will try to convince her husband to either hear out Batman and the surface dwellers or don't listen to them at all because Aquaman will pro his first priority will probably be the safety and security the preservation ultimately the preservation of Atlantis and if that means 
if the preserving Atlantis means joining the Justice League, then that might be his reason to do it. Or he may take some convincing from his wife to convince him that with Superman gone, and uh, there aren't many powerful metahumans in the world to begin with that they know of, perhaps that's the right thing to do. But either way, we're going to get some definitely get some scenes between Aquaman and Mira interacting with each other, talking about the future of Atlantis, if not the future of Earth and mankind altogether. And uh, what I'll, I think would also be interesting is that in the past, especially, well, at least in the cartoon, Wonder Woman of the whole League was more trusting uh, t towards Aquaman than anybody else in the League. Superman respected him. Batman and Green Lantern didn't really trust him. But Wonder Woman, coming from royalty, a royal bloodline as well, will probably have a stronger relationship with Aquaman in the beginning, at least more than Batman than, and the other teammates, because Wonder Woman may understand where he's coming from, his point of view. So it'll be interesting to see if Batman doesn't go to try to recruit him, perhaps Wonder Woman will at Batman's request, or at her own, uh, at like, or at uh, her own willing to. So that'll be interesting to see. Now, speaking of Green Lantern, I noticed this during the end of the movie. They're having the national, they're having the funeral for Superman in Washington, and uh, it's the empty box with the Superman symbol on it. And uh, there's the row of fighter jets that are doing the fly flyby salute and one of the jets goes up into the air he breaks formation breaks the line and i thought to myself oh my god i wonder if that's a green lantern easter egg and there was articles about this later online as soon as the movie came out articles pointing out all of the dc justice league easter eggs and that was one that i noticed personally on upon my first my first viewing of the movie i thought Oh my God, what if that's the Green Lantern Hal Jordan Easter egg? Because what if that's Hal Jordan as a drone pilot flying up into space, either because uh, he doesn't feel like, either because uh, he doesn't feel like honoring this dead alien who saved the Earth, or uh, he's being drawn into outer space by the power of the ring? Who knows, but it is interesting and it's exciting to think about. And perhaps we may end up with the uh, version of Hal, the version of Green Lantern, which is Hal Jordan. And of course, we all know how that went with Ryan Reynolds, with no disrespect to Ryan Reynolds, but even he admitted it was a shit film. Uh, but uh, I think now that uh, the, that's in the past and Warner Brothers and DC is moving forward in the future, and because of the mixed reaction of Batman v Superman, even though the critics may have hated it, but the fans are eating it up. I think we can say, I think I can say with fair certainty that Warner Brothers will handle Green Lantern, Hal Jordan, appropriately this time. If they go the Hal Jordan route. There are also rumors that um, Tyrese uh, Gibson, I think his name is, yeah, Tyrese Gibson from the Fast and Furious franchise was talking was reportedly talking to Warner Brothers and Sa Zack Snyder about the role of Green Lantern. So we may get the John Stewart version, which is my favorite version. However, if they go with the Hal Jordan route, I'll accept that too because there's another actor and of course I can't remember his name, but he was teasing and making references about and heavily implying that he was going to play Green Lantern in future DC films. So we may end up with him or we may end up with Tyrese Gibson's Jon Stewart. Either way, Green Lantern is happening. It is coming. We just don't know when. So uh, those are my thoughts on uh, what we're going to see in uh, Justice League Part 1. Oh, crap. I'm sorry. I almost forgot the last Probably the most important thing, the resurrection of Superman. Either Bruce Wayne and Alfred will be hard at work in the Batcave in their lab trying to figure out how to bring back the Man of Steel, or they will embrace the, or they will accept that he's gone and move past it and move forward towards the future for the good of the Earth. And they'll focus on bringing together the Justice League with these other metahumans, or somebody else will be attempting to bring back Man of Steel. Don't think it'll be Lex Luthor because he's in jail and I think his company has also cut off any association and uh, 
basically has disavowed him because of everything that he did in Batman v Superman, and he's an inmate now. So uh, somebody will be trying to bring Superman back to life. I personally think it's going to be Batman, or Bruce Wayne at least, trying to figure out if there's a way to bring him back. However, Bruce Wayne may have accepted the loss of the Man of Steel and might have moved on with his life. I don't know. I also see another distinct possibility that if it is Darkseid who is the villain in this movie and he uh, comes to Earth with his army of parademons and the Justice League is fighting him off, perhaps uh, Superman will be, his wounds will fully healed by then. We don't know how much time will pass between Batman v Superman and Justice League Part 1. We don't know how much of a time jump there will be, but perhaps his wounds will have healed over time and the sun's rays will have helped regenerate his cells, strengthen him, and he'll burst out of his coffin and he'll fly to the site of the battle and then deliver a couple of uh, hard blows to dark side and kick his ass ultimately that would be pretty damn cool to see but other people could also see that coming so it may be a bit predictable i don't know i just think that would be cool to see either way guys don't worry about the future of superman superman it will be coming back he'll be alive and well now how he'll now, whether or not he'll be different remains to be seen. All right, you guys, I hope you found this video enjoyable and informative. What do you think we're going to see in the Justice League Part 1? What do you hope to see or what do you want to see with all of these amazing characters coming together on the big screen finally? You know, like, what are you hoping to see? What are your hopes for it? Uh, what, do you, what would you like to see? What do you not want to see? How do you think Superman will come back from the dead? Please leave your thoughts and opinions and your feedback down below in the comments section. Let's please. Please be respectful and civil of one another's beliefs and opinions, of course. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more videos like it. Don't forget to like this video. And uh, stay tuned for later tonight as I will be doing my episode review for the dreaded season 6 finale of The Walking Dead, which premieres tonight on AMC. Alright, you guys, have a great rest of the day. Thanks for watching. And of course, until next time, may the Force be with you.